everyone. We're going to find the inverse of f. This is a rational. We're going to check and um, using composition of functions and also find the domain and range. So basically what happens is we're going to switch this to y. You switch the x and the y. You get x equals um, 4 over y. And when you solve for y, you get the same thing. So you're going to get um, x is 4 over x again. So they end up being the same. So when you graph it, they're just on top of each other. Anyway, we're going to check f with f inverse. So basically, it's basically the same thing. I'm just going to let these be the same because they're the same. It's going to equal the same thing of the same function. So you're just plugging 4 over um, 4 over x. We can bring this x up here to get 4x over x, which equals x. When you do that way, it, it turns out to be the same. Now the domain of f equals the range of f inverse and basically, it's all real numbers, uh, but x cannot be 0, because you cannot, can't divide by 0. And the range of f equals the domain of f inverse, and it's the same. It's uh, all real numbers, but it can't be 0, so... All right. Now, let's graph them. You should already know, maybe I'll do it on this one. You should already know that this has a, a vertical asymptote at x equals zero here. Also has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, graph the parent function this would be right here at a 1 and 1 and negative 1 and negative 1. So that's what it would be like if that... This is not the one we're supposed to graph. I just want to show you the difference. And basically, when you have the 4, you're going to come at, up at 4 you're going to come up here at 1 comma 4. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So it kind of spreads out further away from the origin. Okay, then it shoots up. So the only difference of these, this is your F. And on this side too, so we're going to go uh, 1, negative 1, negative 4, and go here, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. And so do you see how it kind of comes out in here? And then it kind of swings by here. So the bigger the number is, so this was uh, y equals 4 over x, which is f, and it's also f inverse because they're both the same. So basically, the inverse is the same as the regular function. You just draw it on top of each other. The green one was just the parent function. The green one was, let me do the green one, was y equals one over x. And that was the parent function. I just wanna show you what happens in here. It kinda of swings out more from, from that negative one. Okay, the uh, other one we're going to do is very similar. It's um, f of x equals negative 3 over x. And basically, we're going to do the same thing. Switch the x and the y. And when you solve for y, you get the same thing. All right, and you can check it. I'll let you check it. It's going to be the same. 
Well, I'll check it. Okay, so we're going to have negative 3 over negative x over 3. And that's going to equal, this is cancels, the two negatives and the threes, and you get x. And it works both ways. So this is, let me do it in a different color. F composed with F inverse. And F inverse composed with F. It would have been the exact same problem, basically. Now, the domain and the range, domain of F equals the range of F inverse, because you just switched the X and Y, which is all real numbers, but uh, zero. And the same thing for the range of F equals the domain of F inverse which is all real numbers, but x can't be zero. And I've just wrote the domains here. Okay? Now, to graph it, the only difference in the other one we graphed is it's going to be in quadrant 2 and 4, because it's negative. And again, it swings out. So, instead of negative 1 in, in here, we're going to go uh, negative 1 to 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. And we have these asymptotes here. So basically, this would be the second quadrant. And this one over here would be the fourth quadrant. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. So it kind of swings out like this. So this is um, our function, f of x equals negative 3 over x, and it's also our inverse, because they're the same. So they're just right on top of each other. Now the last one we do is a little more complicated because the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes change as well. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.